So you kill a lot more animals when you eat veggie burgers than you do when you eat beef. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So a little over a week ago, I released this video discussing the two upcoming debates that were going to happen this month in September that I was really looking forward to. Well, it turns out I was wrong about one of these debates, the one I'm going to talk about here in this video. It was actually from several years ago. Unfortunately, I was misled by no less than two news sources dated August 30th talking about this as an upcoming debate. Well, no big deal. The good news is the debate is here. I've got it all downloaded and let's jump right into it. It's primarily between Gene Bauer, the president and founder of Farm Sanctuary, and Dr. Neil Bernard, a vegan medical doctor, diabetes researcher, versus a social media farmer, Joel Salatin. And the topic for discussion is whether we should be eating things that have a face. Let's start with Gene Bauer presenting his case. The fact is we can choose not to eat other animals. In the case of a lion, they don't have a choice. In the case of us, we do have a choice. Gene it's about our relationship with other animals. Is it about compassion and kindness, or is it about cruelty okay. and exploitation and killing? Let's go to the farmer on the other side who's arguing against the motion, Joel Salatin. Yeah, well, you know, I don't have any problem with uh, vegans. I really don't. Uh, they become our best customers when they find out they can get healthy with our meat. But um, Yeah, I'm sure you know plenty of these people, right? Doubt it. Where I really get my dander up is when I'm accused of saying you can't love because you dress animals. I'm confused. Did he say dress animals? That's a powerful statement. Did you statement. say dress animals? Dress is a euphemism for slaughter. Well, that's just plain ridiculous and hypocritical. Just by acknowledging there's a need to not say the word slaughter or kill animals, you realize it's a horrific, gross activity. So you try to make it all cute with your doublespeak. Dress animals. Wow. It just sounds nicer on the radio. It sure did. <laughs> You know, it's, it's nice to sit here and say, we're going to rescue all these animals. Um, the problem is that it just doesn't work. How are you going to fertilize the vegetables that you're eating? As you'll see here, Joel the farmer pulls out almost every just bad, lame argument that you hear from anti-vegans when they're trying to justify their ways. Here, he's assuming there's no way to grow food crops unless you have animal byproducts, manure. Well, there's actually veganic farms, including one right across the street from us that grows produce without any animal inputs. And there's a, another veganic farmer I know of in the UK that's been in business for 37 years. Yeah, veganic farming. I grow food here all the time in my garden and I never use animal manure. But Joel's not buying it. He asserts that it's necessary to have animal manure in the ground first before you can have a veganic farm. Yeah. It's possible on soils that have, built, that have been built by manures. Not necessarily. And, oh, yes. No, green manure. You know, you can grow, you know, hay and things like that. Cover crops can be used. And okay, so how much acreage, decades. how much extra acreage is it going to take to farm that way? Well, you need it's to It's going to take rotation. about three or four times, maybe five times the amount of acreage we're currently using. Well, if we're not having to grow a lot of crops to feed a lot of livestock, we'll have enough land for that. I'm not sure where Joel gets this figure that we need three to five times amount of land to do veganic farming. But even if that were true, yeah, Gene puts him in his place. If we're not raising all these crops needlessly for animals that we kill for food, we'll have plenty of land to grow these cover crops. That we're not using animals in their historically normal role, which is as scavengers. Hmm, let's see where he's going with this one. Whether it's pigs scavenging acorns in the woods, uh, chickens eating, you know, vegetable scraps. If, if, if every household had a couple of chickens to eat their vegetable scraps, there wouldn't even be a factory farm chicken industry. Well, that makes no sense. How would letting chickens run around your yard wipe out the existence of factory farms? People are still going to want to eat chicken. They're not going to be satisfied with just seeing chickens run around their front yard if they really want to eat chickens. They'll have to do something more than just let chickens run around their yard eating scraps. Well, I'm not uh, against, you know, somebody having chickens that they feed their scraps, but then where I have the issue, though, is when somebody goes up and then cuts off their head. Exactly. That goes way beyond just letting a couple chickens run around your front yard eating scraps. You know, that's where the problem is. And, and you know, in one of your books, you even mentioned how, you know, I believe it is psychologically inappropriate to slaughter animals every single day. That's you know? exactly right. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a, a harsh interaction. It's a violent, bloody interaction. And it, it is. is one and that's it, not necessary. Yeah. Uh, well, look at him scrambling for words there. I'm sure deep down inside, he knows that Gene is right. It's absolutely unnecessary to bloodily, horrifically slaughter 
animals that you're keeping in your front yard to eat scraps or any animals for that matter in order to eat food and be healthy. It's just completely unnecessary. Well, he's got nothing here. Let's see what his next lame anti-vegan argument is. Yeah, the, the, the necessary part is fascinating since there is no animalless place. So where, where are we going to where are we going to uh, put all these animals? Oh, no, not that lame argument. Oh, if everyone were to go vegan, where would all the animals go? I mean, this is completely ridiculous. It seems like everyone's going to go like vegan overnight or over the course of a short span of time. It doesn't work that way. And the reason why there's so many animals that would need to go somewhere is because they're being overbred right now. And they call them out on this stupid argument. Are we going to sterilize all of them? Well, we're the going to make we have so many natural mass parks? producing them. We're mass producing uh, turkeys it, today can't even reproduce naturally they're they're all artificially inseminated so let me just take a quick moment here to educate joel the farmer as to how this would work in the real world that we all live in here it's all about supply and demand as the demand for meat decreases meat producers are going to not produce the same amount of of meat they're going to accordingly lower and lower their output that's how it happened we're not going to release billions of animals onto the world all in a, a flash moment your your opponents argued that that vegetables also have sentient existences that they communicate well, oh yeah the plants have feelings too argument oh uh, cruelty free yeah. not to those screaming plants <laughs> that you can't hear they fucking scream yeah man. Right. They, they make noise. I find it so hypocritical that pro meat eaters, anti vegans, who have no problem at all with literally every year billions of animals being killed needlessly, yet they find the compassion in their hearts to speak up for the rights of plants. Yeah, these guys are plant activists, and this is complete hypocritical nonsense. We all know plants are not sentient beings. They're incapable of experiencing pain or fear or pleasure. They lack brains. They lack central nervous systems. Well, I mean, I don't know the science about that. I, I kind of doubt it. But even if that were the case, even if that were the case, eating plants directly, you're causing much less death. That, because that, that's, that's false, however, because when you, when you monocrop soybeans and corn, you kill countless animals in snakes, rodents, insects, and so on through tillage. Which brings us to the combine harvester argument. Yes, anti-vegans love to assert that millions of animals get killed when combine harvesters go through the field. When they're using those combines, they are grinding up bunnies and and rats yep. and mice. Yep. And as I've shown many times here before, research has been conducted to test this hypothesis and it's completely bogus. Animals aren't stupid. They've placed radio trackers on animals in fields and animals when they see the large and hear the large combine harvester coming at them they just don't stand there like complete idiots they're smart they run they want to survive they don't want to be killed unlike what these meat eaters think animals want to live so you kill a lot more animals when you eat veggie burgers than you do when you eat beef because no, the cow no, no, is because you're feeding animals, the soybeans so. then to the cows i'm sorry so you're, you're feeding the soybeans to the cows no, yeah, Dr. Bernard is 100% correct there because the anti-vegan said large monocrops of soy and corn. And those crops are not grown for humans. Those crops are fed almost 100% to animals, livestock, factory farming animals. So even more reason to go vegan if you really are concerned about these animals getting sucked up into the combine harvester, which, as I've said, really doesn't happen on the scale that these anti-vegans are claiming. Anyway, this debate went on for like an hour and a half. I just tried to pick out some good highlights here, some good exchanges between the vegans and the, the farmer here. If you want to watch the entire video, I'll link to it down below in the show description. And also, um, if you got some of this video, hit like and share with me in the comments what you thought about this debate. What'd you think of all these um, just typical anti-vegan arguments, the combine harvester, where would the animals go? All these ones that the farmer brought out. What was your favorite? And let, let us know down below. And and um, I guess that's it for this time, guys. So um, yeah, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Hit the no notification bell to get notified when we have new videos, live streams, and activity on our community page. So until next time, guys, let's keep it carved, baby. Keep it carved.